Inshallah, tonight I will be reading um, from Surah Al-Kahf, from ayahs 46 until 59, Inshallah. Salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. المال والبنون زينة الحياة الدنيا والباقيات الصالحات خير عند ربك ثوابا وخير أملا ويوم نسير الجبال فترى الأرض بارزة وحشرناهم وحشرناهم فلم نغادر منهم أحدا وعرضوا على ربك صفا لقد جئتمونا كما خلقناكم أول مرة بل زعمتم أن لن نجعل لكم موعدا ووضع الكتاب فترى المجرمين مشفقين مما فيه ويقولون ويقولون يا ويلتنا ما لهذا الكتاب لا يغادر صغيرة ولا كبيرة إلا أحصاها ووجدوا ما عملوا حاضرا ولا يظلم ربك أحدا وإذ قلنا للملائكة اسجدوا لآدم فسجدوا إلا إبليس فسجدوا إلا إبليس كان من الجن ففسق عن أمر ربه أفتتخذونه وذريته أولياء من دوني وهم لكم عدو بئس للظالمين بدلا ما أشهدتهم خلق السماوات والأرض ولا خلق أنفسهم وما كنت متخذ المضلين عبدا ويوم يقول نادوا شركائي الذين زعمتم فدعوهم فلم يستجيبوا لهم وجعلنا بينهم موبقا ورأى المجرمون النار فظنوا أنهم مواقعوها ولم يجدوا عنها مصرفا ولقد صرفنا في هذا القرآن للناس من كل مثل وكان الإنسان أكثر شيء جدلا وما منع الناس أن يؤمنوا إذ جاءهم الهدى ويستغفروا ربهم إلا أن تأتيهم سنة الأولين إلا أن تأتيهم سنة الأولين أو يأتيهم العذاب قبلا وما نرسل المرسلين إلا مبشرين ومنذرين ويجادل الذين كفروا بالباطل ليدحضوا به الحق واتخذوا آياتي وما أنذروا هزوا ومن أظلم ممن ذكر بآيات ربه فأعرض عنها ونسي ما قدمت يداه إنا جعلنا على قلوبهم أكن أن يفقهوه وفي آذانهم وقرا 
وإن تدعوهم إلى الهدى فلن يهتدوا إذا أبدا وربك الغفور ذي الرحمة لو يؤاخذهم بما كسبوا لعجل لهم العذاب بل لهم موعد لن يجدوا من دونه موئلا وتلك القرى أهلكناهم لما ظلموا وجعلنا وجعلنا لمهلكهم موعدا صدق الله العلي العظيم صلوات Sen Seyyid Ali, may Allah protect you inshallah and bless you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I would like to welcome everybody for another Thursday night program. And we are honored to have uh, uh, Sayyid, Samahat al-Sayyid Mustafa al-Qazbini with us tonight. And uh, tonight is uh, the first anniversary of passing away of uh, our one of our best community members here we had, Sako Khanum Aghdase Dodban Shuruqi, the mother of, of uh, our dear brother Hamid Shuruqi, and our dear brother Humayun Shuruqi. Uh, my deepest condolences to uh, the children, her children, her grandchildren, as well as the in-laws. Uh, I personally knew her very much. Mashallah, she was one of the greatest of our community members, but as you all know, one day we come and one day we have to leave. And uh, I take this opportunity to thank the Humayun and uh, I mean the Shuruqi family, Mr. Humayun and Mr. Hamid, for their uh, continuous uh, support to the masjid. They are one of our community members who continually, just like all of you pretty much, and I would like to thank this great family. May Allah protect them all and keep them safe, inshallah, and bless their mother's soul, inshallah. Let's recite Surah Al-Hamd for her uh, pure soul with a loud salawat, please. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين صدق الله العلي العظيم And we heard the news of uh, passing away our dear brother Hatam or Hussein Hatam Hussein Rajab Hatam his son passed away two days ago Yes, yes, uh, his name is Mehran Rajab and uh, let's go ahead and recite uh, Surah Al-Fatiha for his soul, preceded by a loud salawat, please. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Malik, Yawm al-Din. Iyaka na'abudu wa iyaka nasta'een. Ihdina al-Sirat al-Mustaqeem, Sirat al-Ladhina an'amta alayhim, Ghayr al-Maghdubi alayhim, Wa al-Tadneen. And we're going to recite some verses from the Holy Quran and gift it to uh, the mother of Shuruqi family, insha'Allah. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahi ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. والفجر وليال عشر والشفع والليل إذا يس هل في ذلك قسم لم تر كيف فعل ربك بعاد يرمذ 
ذات العماد التي لم يخلق مثلها في البداد وثمود الذين جابوا الصخر بالواد وفرعون بالأوتاد الذين طغوا في البلاد فاكثروا في الفساد صب عليهم ربك سوط عذاب إن ربك لبالمرصاد أما الإنسان إذا ما ابتلاه ربه فأكرمه ورعمه فيقول ربي أكرما فأكرمه ورعمه فيقول ربي أكرما وأما إذا ما ابتلاه فقدر عليه رزقه فيقول ربي أهانا كلا بل لا تكرمون اليتيم كلا بل لا تكرمون اليتيم ولا تحاضون على طعام المسكين وتاكلون التراث اكلا لما وتحبون المال حبا جما كلا اذا دكت الارض دكا وجاء ربك والملك صفا صفا وجاء يومئذ بجهنم تذكر الإنسان يومئذ يتذكر الإنسان وأنا له الذكرى يقول يا ليتني قدمت لحياتي فيومئذ لا يعذب عذابه أحد ولا يوثق وثاقه أحد 
Please help me to invite the Imam of the Center, Samahat al Sayyid Mustafa al Qazim, to the podium with a loud salawat, please. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We give condolences to the Shuruqi family for the anniversary of their Honorable Mother, Haj Khanum Aghdas Khanum Shuruqi. We give condolences to our dear brother Humayun and Haj Hamid and the rest of the family. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to raise her ranks in paradise. One of the good things that children should do for their parents is to remember them. Remembering a mother after she passes away by her children is an act of loyalty and faithfulness and virtue. Our parents, they need, they need us. They need our help not just during our, their lifetimes, but after their departure, they also need their sons and their daughters. The least thing we can do for them is to remember them once in a while, reciting Quran and Fatiha and giving food, giving charity on their behalf, The Prophet وسلم, says, the acts of goodness that you do for your deceased one, for your parents, for those who left you, it reaches them in their graves. When you pray for them, when you recite Quran, when you pay charity on their behalf, when you feed the people, especially the poor and the orphans on their behalf, it reaches them while they are in their graves. They benefit. They benefit from these gifts. These are gifts that you send to your parents. So try to remember them. Try to be loyal to your mother, to your father. Don't leave them alone there. One day we're going to end up in the same place. And we expect our children and grandchildren to remember us. Keep this in mind. The anniversary of your late mother, your late father, Remember them with acts of goodness. Sallu ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Also, we give our condolences to Hajj Hussein Rajab for the passing away of his young son, Mehran Rajab. Inna lillahu wa inna lihi raja'oon. Please, I ask you to join me in reciting Surah Al-Fatiha for Hajj Khanum Shuruqi and Mehran Rajab Al Fatiha. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Maliki wa Madiniyak. 
الآخر نص صلاة المستقيم الصلاة الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المقبول عليهم الضالين صدق الله العلي العظيم. We going to study سورة النحل verses sixty five through sixty seven. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أنبياء الله جميعا وعلى سيدهم وخاتمهم حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والله أنزل من السماء ماء فأحيا به الأرض بعد موتها إن في ذلك لآية لقوم يسمعون وإن لكم في الأنعام لعبرة نسقيكم مما في بطونه من بين فرث ودم لبنا خالصا سائغا للشاربين ومن ثمرات النخيل والأعناب تتخذون منه سكرا ورزقا حسنا إن في ذلك لآية لقوم يعقلون صدق الله العلي العظيم In these verses the Holy Quran draws our attention to the blessings and the gifts of God which we really cannot count we cannot count enumerate these many blessings of God that we enjoy but sometimes we don't realize them we don't appreciate them we don't give thanks we take them for granted God says remember my blessings upon you and here he begins with the first and the most important gift of God which is water we take water for granted but in, in there are some countries some areas where water is scarce and you know some countries right now are fighting they are fighting among themselves in Africa in in the Middle East and other areas over the the water they are fighting there are wars among them because of their sh share in the water we take we take it for granted. We don't appreciate it. God says, Wallahu anzala min as ma'an. The Lord sent down from heaven, from the sky, water. Fa'ahya bihil arda ba'da mawtiha. And thereby revives and resurrects the land after it was dead. The land, sometimes the land is completely dead. If you go to San Joaquin Valley, a valley not far from here, three, four hours drive, less than, after the area between Bakersfield and Fresno, this area. This area, many years ago, it was completely dead. Dead desert. Dead desert. Go now. It's America's food basket. Provides food not only not only for this state, for the entire 50 states and beyond, and beyond. We don't pay attention to it. So God resurrects and revives the land after it was dead, completely dead, through what? Through this water, through this golden gift. Now we are going through very severe drought, unfortunately, not only here, but everywhere. Places where they used to enjoy rain, they don't see rain anymore. And we have to pray to God. Sincerely pray to God. Sincerely. Every individual, every believer, every woman, every man, every child, we should petition to Him, pray to Him, appeal to Him to send His gift to send his water upon us, to send the rain. We need the rain. Why do we have this problem? Because of the greed of some countries and some governments and some, some people. They don't care about the environment. They don't care about global warming. They don't care about climate change. 
All what they care about is their own pocket, their own profit, their own money. They don't care what happens to the earth, to the people of the earth, to animals, to vegetation. They don't care. They don't care. God says this land is amana, trust. Each and every inhabitant of this land, of this earth, is, is, should be a guard, should be a guard to protect and maintain this earth, maintain the environment. It's a moral and religious responsibility to take care of the environment, keep the environment clean. We have to go green. We, especially the Muslims, we have to go green. We have to teach our kids not to waste, to protect the environment. And to conserve water, to conserve it. Yes, we have running water at home, but that does not mean we, we open it and, and the water go. We have to teach the kids when they take shower, when they wash their hands, they have to be aware that this water is gold. It's gold. It's the source of living. This water is very precious. Don't look at your bill, water bill. $50, $100, $200, this is nothing. This water is more valuable than the water bill, than the money that you give. Without it, we cannot survive. So we have to conserve. This is our moral responsibility. Mothers and fathers should be role models for their kids at home. Reminding them every single day, conserve water. It's not acceptable to go in the shower for 30 minutes or 40 minutes or even 20 minutes. Seven minutes, five minutes. We have to be more responsible to take care of this environment. God has given us this earth. We have to pass it to the next generation. To the next generation. We don't want our great grandchildren to come into this life and they suffer. We don't want them to suffer. Wallahu anzala min as ma'an fa'ahya. He revived the land. He revived it. He resuscitated the land. Fa'ahya bihi al arda ba'da mawtiha. After it was completely dead. Inna verily. Inna fi thalika. La ayatin. Surely in, in this there are signs for those who hear. Some people do not hear. Those who hear means those who listen, those who heed the call. But some people are heedless. They are deaf. They don't listen. They don't care. They don't care. This book is for those who are ready to listen. Many people are not ready to listen. They are not ready to listen. For those who listen. Now, this rain that comes down in the Quran, not just the physical rain, not just the, the water itself. Rain also, one of the meanings of rain in this book, it's a metaphor for what? Metaphor for? In several verses in the Quran, when God says, we send rain down upon people. فَسَالَتْ أَوْدِيَةٌ بِقَدَرِهَا Wallahu anzala min as ma'an, your Lord sent down water from the sky. Fasalat awdiyatun, these rivers and the streams, they go, they move, they run according to their capacity. What does that mean? There is a metaphor here. There is a satiric meaning here, hidden meaning here, ta'wil, not just tafsir. Tafsir is the rain, this physical rain. But what is the ta'wil? The other meaning, the deeper meaning. Rain here is a metaphor for knowledge, ilm. God sends down knowledge, provides knowledge. One of them is this book, source of knowledge. Plenty of knowledge is in this book, plenty. People understand it according to their own capacity. People are different in their capacities, different in their understandings. Some of them, they not only are intelligent, but ready to learn. They have the capacity to learn. They don't have short attention. When they read, they enjoy reading. Some people, they enjoy movies. Movies. 
They can watch movie, two movies, three movies a day, mashallah. Some people, they play games, two hours, three hours, four hours games. Some people can watch NBA basketball, two hours, how long it takes when the Lakers play and they lose, alhamdulillah. Two hours, maybe more than two hours. They sit there and they watch, they enjoy. And some people enjoy knowledge. Put him in a library, put her in a library within books for five, six hours, they disappear. They disappear within their books. God says each one has a capacity. We send down knowledge and people receive and learn this knowledge. They get it according to their own capacity. So rain here is also a metaphor for learning. Do you have the guts to learn? Some people quit school. They don't. Some people, they barely go to elementary school. Some people say, no, I want to learn. I love learning. I love knowledge. I love knowledge. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Al-ilm ra'sul khayri kullih. Seeking knowledge is the fountainhead of every prophet and every goodness in this life. Every goodness. One day he said, if you seek only the dunya, you are not people of akhirah. You don't believe in akhirah. You must seek knowledge. If you want to succeed, <laughs> you, you must learn. And if you believe in the akhirah, you don't believe in the dunya, you must seek knowledge. And if you believe in both this life and the hereafter, you also should seek knowledge. But how many Muslims are ready to sacrifice and learn and pay for their classes and travel to some distance to learn? How many of them? I don't know. Don't ask me. وَاللَّهُ أَنزَلَ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَاءً فَأَحْيَا بِهِ الْأَرْضَ بَعْدَ مَوْتِهَا إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَةً لِقَوْمٍ يَسْمَعُونَ And then God also gives parables, an example of how He resurrects the dead. He says, if you don't believe me, if you don't believe the day of resurrection, how the dead are going to be resurrected and they come back to life, look at the land which is barren, which is dead, how the rain comes down after a few hours. Here in California, you can see the difference after a few hours, not a few days, after a few hours. You see how the land, how the landscape changes immediately. How it becomes green, beautiful, lush, fresh when we have rain. And the reason we don't have rain, because we sin, we sin. Our sinning, not just the climate change. Climate change is the is, is, is the material side of it. But the spiritual and moral problem, our dhunub, our sinning, when we sin. God cuts, us, cuts off the supply, so we, we get reminded. He does not want to, to punish us. It's not a punishment, it's a reminder. So we go back to God. وَإِنَّ لَكُمْ The second blessing, that God provides for human beings are the cattle, an'am, cattle. وَإِنَّ لَكُمْ فِي الْأَنْعَامِ لَعِبْرَةً And surely in cattle that you see, these animals, sometimes we don't appreciate them. There is la'ibra, there is a lesson for you in them. نُسْقِيكُمْ مِمَّا فِي بُطُونِهِ So you can drink, we make you to drink, which is in their bellies, مِمَّا فِي in their bellies, there is what? How does the milk get extracted? From where? You know it's from the blood and from the refuse. So God says, you're drinking. You are drinking a delicious milk, appetizing milk, Lebanon khalisan, pure milk. Sa'igan, delicious, from something that comes extracted from the blood and the refuse. But you don't smell it. The milk smells good. You don't see the color. The color does not change. The taste does not change. And what else? Color, taste, and what else? The smell does not change. This is a miracle. This is a miracle. 
It's not contaminated. It's pure, pure. The milk that a mother gives to her baby and the milks that we get from animals. And the Prophet wasallam says, the only alternative to food and a drink is what? If you don't want to eat and you don't want to drink. What is the alternative? He says milk. Milk is the only the only source of nutrition that if, if someone refrains from eating and drinking, he or she can survive on, on milk. This is why feeding children by their mothers, nursing them by their mothers for the first two years is very vital, very important. And it is mentioned in the Quran. Mothers who wants to build strong children, healthy children, they should nurse them, them themselves. They should nurse those children themselves. من بين فرث ودم لبنا خالصا سائغا للشاربين. This milk is also mentioned in the Quran. God says in paradise there are four types of drinks, main drinks, four rivers. In Surah Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, chapter forty-seven, Surah Muhammad chapter forty-seven, verse number fifteen. God says, مَثَلُ الْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي وُعِدَ muttaqun." He says, if you want to give you a glimpse of paradise and the life in paradise and what people eat and drink, this is a small example. He says, مَثَلُ الْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي وُعِدَ muttaqun." فِيهَا أَنْهَارٌ It has nahar. Nahar means stream, river. Anharun, he begins with what? Anharun. من ماء غير آسن. Number one, water. But this water is purified. غير آسن is not contaminated. Many people do not have access to clean water. Not only in Africa. If you go to Africa, they tell you, be aware, be careful, don't even brush your teeth with a faucet. You have to, go, you have to take with you a bottle something like this, to the bathroom, so you brush your teeth with it, if you go to Africa. But we have here, the problem here in America, where in America? They don't have safe drinking water. Flint, Michigan. Because the majority of the people in Flint, Michigan are white. Huh? No. If they were white, <laughs> everything would be okay. But because they are black people, they don't care about them. Drinking water here in America, in the richest country. So God says, in paradise, the water is a purified. غَيْرُ asin, Purified. You don't need even these bottles. These are nothing compared to the water you get it there. By the way, these are very expensive nowadays. And then you have to recycle this. But I don't know whether... The water here in LA, is, is it safe? Tap water is safe? What do you think? This is another problem we have. So this is number one, water. Number two, ma ma in ghayri asin wa anharun min laban. And then there are rivers of milk. You drink pure milk in paradise. And then wa anharun Min khamrin, wine, rivers of wine, and rivers of asal, honey. So these are four drinks in paradise. Water, and milk, and wine, and asal, honey. Now, how does wine is served in paradise? And if wine is acceptable there, why it is not acceptable here in this life? What is the answer? God says there are rivers of wine in paradise. Rivers. You enjoy drinking it. This is what God says. So why it is forbidden? Because many people argue that 
God mentions wine in the book, in the Quran, many times. And he says one of the main drinks in paradise is wine. So wine is halal. Do you know that? Many Muslims, huh? they pray, they fast. They pray and they fast, but they drink wine. And their argument is God says, but they forget that God says in the same book, in the same book, they read part of it, but they don't read the other part. The other part is what? إِنَّمَا الْخَمْرُ وَالْمَيْسِرُ وَالْأَزْلَامُ وَالْأَنْصَابُ رِجْسِ Abomination مِنْ عَمَلِ الشَّيْطَانِ This is the work of Satan. So, فَاجْتَنِبُوهُ Stay away from it. Stew it. Don't touch it. Don't drink it. But then why? What is the difference between the wine here and the wine there? The quality or what? Or the price? Here is affordable or not affordable what what is it huh yes yeah, sister monica yes yeah it doesn't make you she says it doesn't make you it does not intoxicate where is this this is in chapter 56 chapter 56 surah al-waqi'ah god states very clearly yatufu alayhim waldanun mukhalladun inshallah when we go there you will see it God says, waiters are running around people when they are there. You are sitting and the waiter comes. Well, Danun young, they are young, energetic. They are not tired, you know, old and tired. No, 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 they have energy. Well, Danun mukhalladun bi'akwabin with vessels wa abariq pitchers wa ka'sim min ma'in and a cup of wine. Cup of wine. But then God says immediately after that, la yusadda'una anha wa la Yunzifun. This type of wine is not going to make them, uh, give them hadak. Yusadda'un comes from suda'. Suda' in Arabic, hadak. Sardard. Sardard, hadak. La yusadda'un. They don't get hadak. Wala yunzifun. Neither they get intoxicated when they drink this wine. Does not intoxicate them. So this is the difference. This is the difference between the wine here. The wine here makes you crazy. The wine here, when people drink, what happens to them? What happens to them? The other day I was reading a survey in some Arab countries, the rate of divorce is high, getting higher and higher. And the survey says, when they investigated, they found out the main reason for it is the husband comes back home drunk, sakran drunk. And then it's easy to say to his wife, when he, he's a drunk, he's going to get into an argument with his wife, and he says to her three times, talaq, talaq, talaq. Three times he divorces her and he demolishes the family, the kids. Very easy. Comes back home drunk, doesn't know what he's saying, and then he tells his wife, you are divorced, divorced, divorced. And sometimes people commit murder, car accidents, many crimes, because they are intoxicated. This is why it's forbidden. God does not want to forbid us from enjoying life. He says, Tayyibat uhilla lakum tayyibat. What is lawful, what is good, what is healthy, halal for you, enjoy it. But wine is forbidden. Because wine creates Mayhem in the societies, disasters in the families and societies. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let's go to the third verse, and then we conclude. And God provides for you women thamarat in nakhil. Here, here God mentions the fruits and the juice that is extracted from some of the fruits, like the palm trees, the dates, and the vines. These two, the juice. So he says, he says, وَمِنْ ثَمَرَاتِ النَّخِيلِ And from the fruits of the date palm and the vines, وَمِنْ ثَمَرَاتِ النَّخِيلِ وَالْأَعْنَابِ أَعْنَاب, plural of عِنَب. And عِنَب is what? <coughs> Grapes, angur. الْأَعْنَاب تَتَّخِذُونَ مِنْهُ سَكَرًا وَرِسْقًا حَسَنًا You, for which... You derive, you derive, sakar here means juice or juices. You derive from it, juices, warisqan hasana, and goodly, 
provisions, you sell it in the market. You sell it in the market. Inna fi dhalika la ayatan liqawmin yaqilun. This is also there. In this, there are signs and directions for those who heed the call, for those who are prudent, for those who meditate, for those who reflect, for those who understand. This is part of what God provided us. Next week, next Thursday, inshallah, we're going to read the miracle of the bee. This chapter is called Surah An Nahl. The name of the chapter is the bee. Why, why it's the bee? Why God names the chapter after an animal, an insect, an insect? Sometimes this insect, when it comes near you, you run away. You run away, all of you, alhamdulillah. When this insect come, but God says this is a source of blessings, a source of something very precious, a source of the most important medicine, which is honey. Honey applies to two, your wife and the drink that we're going to speak about it, inshallah, next week. Allahumma khfar al-mu'minina wal-mu'minat wal-muslimina wal-muslimat al-ahya'i minhum wal-amwat tabi'i allahumma baynana wa baynahum bil-khayrat innaka mujibu al-da'wat innaka ghafiru al-khati'at innaka mahi al-sayyat wa ja'iluha hasanat innaka ala kulli shayin qadir Please join me in reciting Surah Al-Fatiha for مرحومة حج خانم أقدسة شروقي الفاتحة مع الصلاة على محمد وآل محمد